Welcome to this pedagogy premiere on Nurture Principle 2, The Classroom as a Safe Base. In this short video, we'll consider ways to ensure that the classroom is a safe base for children and young people and explore a self-evaluation tool. A nurturing approach recognises that positive relationships are central to both learning and well-being. A key aspect of a nurturing approach is an understanding of attachment theory and how early experiences can have a significant impact on development. It all recognises that the early learning and school setting staff have a role to play in establishing positive relationships that are required to promote healthy social and emotional development and that these relationships should be reliable, predictable and consistent where possible. A nurturing approach has a key focus on the school environment and emphasises the balance between care and challenge, which incorporates attunement, warmth and connection, alongside structure, high expectations and a focus on achievement and attainment. It is based on the understanding of the six nurturing principles, which are children's learning is understood developmentally. The environment offers a safe base. The importance of nurture for the development of well-being. Language is a vital means of communication. All behaviour is communication. And transitions are important in a young person's life. A nurturing approach can be applied at both the universal and targeted levels and promotes inclusive, respectful relationships across the whole school community, including learners, staff, parents, carers and other partners. Let's now consider the second nurture principle. The classroom offers a safe base. A classroom environment is inviting and nurturing for all. The classroom offers a balance of educational and social and emotional and mental health experiences aimed at supporting the development of children's relationships with each other and with adults. Adults are reliable and consistent in their approaches to children and make the important link between emotional containment and cognitive learning. Where possible, predictable routines are explained and practised and there are clear expectations and positive models of how all adults in school relate to children and young people, both in and out of the classroom. Consider whether your setting is a safe place, physically and emotionally, for your pupils, staff, parents and carers. How do you promote structure and predictability? It's also important that your classroom or nurture space has quiet zones and reflections of home. The Circle Framework is a great self-evaluation tool and resource which introduces the importance of considering inclusion in terms of four main areas. The physical environment, both physical and social. The environment includes both the physical and social factors. Physical environment refers to the practical layout of the classroom and the resources used within it. The social environment concerns the attitudes, expectations and actions of peers and adults. Routines and structures are events that happen in the same way with regularity. The start, middle and end of your routine become predictable through repetition. Daily routines help learners to know what to anticipate next. Social routines help them enjoy with and interact with others. Motivation gives learners incentive, enthusiasm and interest when engaging with activities and people around them. Learners can be motivated by their own feelings, desires, self-esteem, confidence and responses of others. Skills refers to learners' ability in the following areas. Attention and concentration, organisation and planning, posture and mobility, dexterity and manipulation, socialising, emotions and relationships, verbal and non-verbal communication. Daily routines help learners to know and anticipate what comes next and social routines help them to enjoy and interact with others. 
Learners benefit from a degree of order and consistency in their lives. For some learners, this is mainly achieved in school. It may be useful to consider structures and routines in terms of how the day or week is structured, how lessons are delivered, and how rules and roles are implemented. Some learners need visual supports to help them recognise predictable routines, and additional visual supports to help them understand changes to those routines. Set days for activities such as assembly, PE and music will help learners anticipate and come prepared for these. Having a consistent format for the start, middle and the end of each day can be beneficial. Simple approaches such as having consistent seating plans can help reduce the risk of anxiety or distraction for some learners. Building in routine times for movement breaks, for example, used consistently at the end of an activity, can help learners to settle and prepare for the next task. Having a consistent format for lesson delivery can help learners know what to expect so they can be prepared. Stating the learning intentions at the start of the lesson, ensuring that these are understood and referring to them. Using whole class checklists may help to ensure understanding of the task for all. Reviewing and summarising learning outcomes will help learners understand if their personal learning targets have been achieved. The regular use of active learning and multi-sensory learning should help ensure learners know that their particular learning style is likely to be met during the lesson. Using a consistent approach to behaviour should help learners understand what is and is not acceptable. Setting clear and specific class rules in collaboration with the class should help to ensure that they all agree and understood these rules. Displaying class rules clearly and referring to them regularly will help to reinforce the understanding of this. Encouraging learners to see themselves as respected, valued and useful members of the class can be promoted by regularly assigning positive roles, for example, book monitor, group leader, messenger, etc. This can help to reduce the negative views that some learners may have of themselves. Tina Ray, child psychologist, suggests that a calm corner or nurture nook can be used to support the well-being of all children and young people within a school community. She states that a calm corner should be a safe place where children and young people can give themselves the opportunities to be resilient, stay calm and focused. Importantly, allowing all children to remain within the classroom. Developing their self-awareness greater levels of adaptability, flexibility and independence should be core aims of such a space. Cam Corners can also provide refuge, a place to take time out to reflect and express feelings. However, it is important to note that all classrooms and areas of the school are built around the same ethos, approaches and language, not just in a nurture room or base. If you're creating a calm corner within the classroom, Dr. Ray recommends the consideration of the following five points. Location. Is it semi-private yet easily accessible? What furniture do you have within the area? Comfy cushions, chairs, a bean bag or a desk? Do you have a range of visuals and tools for learners to engage with? Have learners been taught about the calm corner? Why it's there? who can use it and when. Within their How Nurturing Is Our School pack, Fife's educational psychology colleagues recommend that staff complete the associated self-evaluation wheel to demonstrate areas of strength and development against elements linking to our second nurturing principle. For example, how is structure provided? Are there visible, clear and consistent boundaries? Are calm, warm yet firm tones of voice used? Is there a balance of support and challenge in tasks? Are changes to routines communicated clearly? Thank you for engaging with this pedagogy premiere.